It's the Wildcats and the Bears. Wildcats and Bears coming up next on MC Sports. Good, good evening, everyone. I'm Kieran Costa. I'm here with Lev and Adam at Coach Parks Field. It's a beautiful uh, November night for football in Menlo Atherton, California. We have the Woodside Wildcats. They're four and five, coached by Justin Andrews, versus the seven and two MA Bears who are undefeated in league play this year. Any initial thoughts on the Bears, Adam? Um, their their offense is pretty good. Uh, maybe a little work on the defense. Other than that, they might be do they might do good this game. They'll be led by Malik Johnson, the senior, standing six one. He's the wide receiver and strong safety. What do you have on the Wildcats, love? Well, the Wildcats are coming here to a hostile um, MA Bears environment as the Bears are storming onto the field right now. Here so come the Bears on senior night. The student sections, rowdy, not as rowdy as we saw them on homecoming a couple weeks ago. But this is this is a real hostile environment to play if you're the Woodside squad. The Wildcats, Trevor Cook. Seems to be their star player. He's a senior. He's 6'1", 188 pounds. He's a QB wide receiver. And he leads them on the offensive side of the ball. Lewis Robles and Scott Moore Minito, the captains for the Wildcat squad. We will soon see who will start for the quarterback here position in Menlo Atherton. For them, they have quite a few different choices. They can go with Flete Malupo. They can go. They can also go with Jack Alexander, which they have definitely came come back to him many times. I think he is their starter, and they. So I'm expecting Jack Alexander to get this start tonight for the MA Bears. We are under five minutes to go till the kickoff. Daniel Humelian Felito Malupo out for the Bears to take the coin foot there, captaining tonight. And the Bears in the huddle, far side of the field. How do you see this one coming out, Adam? And after that, Lev. Um, I feel like they have a chance. Uh, they should probably try to get the ball first. Uh, especially because of their record. It might, I might support them to get the, the lead first. Last game, what really the MA Bears succeeded on in this is that they forced the other team to commit a lot of turnovers, and that's how they got all their points, and that's really going to be the difference. I choose that whatever team can force the most turnovers in this game, I think will be the winner. I think the Bears need to establish their running game early because they have the pass game and everyone knows they have the pass game. They need to establish that their running game can do it too. The records show that it should be all MA. They're above 500 team at seven and two, playing against a par 500 team at four and five. But let's see if the Wildcats can put up a fight. It is Time for our national anthem here at Coach Parks Field in Manuel Atherton.
They're gonna play the national anthem right now. Don't say yeah, anything. Yeah, put it back on the kickoff. Don't say anything. I don't say anything. Welcome back here to Menlo Atherton. A great moment before our national anthem. Um, Did by J.D. Carson and Joey Olshan. They made, talked about um, depression and how that affects high school students and how that had affected their friends personally. A very touching moment here at Coach Parks Field before but this one. A beautiful rendition of the national anthem. Bears do their customary jog across the field, handshakes and hugs for everyone on the Woodside squad as it be tonight. And I saw during that national anthem, Justin, I, me I mentioned Justin Anderson was standing apart there during the national anthem. All his teams was on the sideline and he was standing behind by himself. Justin Anderson is a junior. He is the star player of this team, as we saw two weeks ago, getting multiple picks and absolutely destroying defenses and offenses. He did it all. He's also the star of a basketball team. A uh, great athlete in multiple sports. Justin Anderson, number six. He usually gets the starting QB nod. He's also a wide receiver and a quarterback. Cornerback, as I said, got a pick two weeks ago. It looks like we are ready for football. Just about past 7.30 here. Mental Atherton coming off definitely a good game last as they won 24 to seven against Half Moon Bay. As Destin Hawkins in that game got 142 yards and a touchdown. So maybe look out for him. 
And the Bears will receive. J.D. Carson back to receive with who else but Justin Anderson. Don't want to kick it to that guy on the kicker turn. Crazy speed, crazy arm, crazy defense. He does it all. It's we're just about ready for football. Here we go. Ethan and Steinmetz, scrib kick. Scrib kick. Um, a nice play. It was an onside kick, it looks like. The lineman, Dominic Paga. He's a linebacker. And he just, it deflected off his body. He dove on it. So the Bears get it first. Interesting choice there by the coaches on um, Woodside side of things to start it off with a onside kick. This just gives the Bears good starting position. Starting off at their own 42, Anderson in the gun. Justin Anderson will get the start. To run Hand up, right up the middle, Dustin Hawkins picks up two. Not a big gain, and as I said in the open, Bears want to establish the running game early. Show yep. they have the running abilities, because everyone knows they can throw the football well. He had the, he had the big game last game. Can he? continue showing his very good skill here and find a way to get this run game for Mendel Atherton going. Same setup. Hawkins right behind Anderson. Could it be another run? We don't know. Second down and eight. Anderson keeps it. QB's Up the right sideline. Breaks one tackle. Breaks another. First down and more. Into Wildcat territory. Down about the... 40, 35 of the Wildcats. That is exactly what you're saying. Justin Anderson, he has the skill to do it all. He takes a snap, runs it, and there you go. First down for his team, breaks two tackles, how you said. And there, we saw him run the ball in the design play. He can also run the ball just scrambling. If he has no receivers, that's not a problem for him. He'll just roll out, he'll get five yards every time. This is good, they're already in. Wildcat territory. Exact same setup as the first two. Uh, and again, Dustin Hopkins, du <laughs> my bad. Dustin Hawkins straight up the middle again, picked up one. Yeah, that maybe two. He's got absolutely trampled on by the defense from the Wildcats. And the last two plays, they haven't isolated him at all. And Dustin Hawkins comes to the sideline. He's gonna sit out this one, maybe a pass play. Yeah, it would make sense to pass. The, most of the runs were good, except for the last one. Eric Stewart, the halfback, behind Anderson. Anderson sits in the pocket all day. Oh, man. Just missed Malik Johnson, he had him though. That's uh, a great off throw, the hand. Um, Anderson usually makes that throw, gonna set up a long third down, third and 10. Can we see any more clutchness? from Justin Anderson on this play. We will see, it's third down and 10. The ball is on the Wildcats 37. We Offense has not been a problem for this team. As we saw, they put up 24 last week and 49 the week before against Half Moon Bay and Menlo. Halfback there again, Anderson will probably want to throw the ball. Third and very long. Anderson waits, and he's gonna take it himself. Finds a hole, and is brought down about the That's 30, 29, and it's fourth down. And the, is the offense staying on the field? The offense is staying on the field. It looks like it's gonna be a very short fourth down opportunity. Fourth and one, maybe. Yeah, it will be fourth and two. The offense stays out on the field. And Hawkins comes out. This is his kind of play. Pounded up the middle. He'll probably, he could get the two yards. Especially he's gone two on the last two plays. Yes, offense is still out on the field. So they're going for it. There's only two yards that they have to make. But honestly, who do you, will they make it? We will gotta see here as Anderson, Anderson keeps it himself. Runs into a pile of white wow. jerseys. Gets through. And he finds his way to the end zone. Who else but Justin Anderson just fought through a pile. Had a beautiful lane after that. 
Bears put early points on the board. Can they run away with this one? This guy Just is having a extra maniac. point pending. This guy's a maniac. He like runs he through. He breaks two tackles. That was a really strong, and he runs right into the end zone. Yeah, he's like a mini version of Michael Vick. Okay. We. Yeah. And the Bears are lined up for the extra point. Nine fifteen to go. And a big game versus Woodside. Kick is straight through. Seven nothing Bears. Now. It's hostile environment, rowdy crowd at MA. What do the Wildcats need to do on the first play, first two plays, even on this whole possession to get the crowd out of it and get themselves back in the game? No turnovers whatsoever, and they got to get the run game going. Yeah, uh, run game going, and also throw the ball a little bit. It, it will give them some yardage, and it's, it showed that the... The passing game has has really helped them in past games to score. Didn't, they have not done great in their league as they're one and four, and they're on a four game losing streak. So they've definitely been lacking what just Coach Justin Anderson, and Andrews, I'm sorry, would really want them rather have them to do. Oh, Coach okay. Rob Vapati is obviously not stressed at all. He has a lay on. He's just walking up and down the sideline. He's having a great Here's time. Anthony and Walker. his team's leading by seven early. Anthony Walker is going to kick this one off. And we're ready. And kick is up. Just three minutes after our first one. And this one's driven into the end zone the exact opposite of the one before. And Lucas Girasso just got absolutely decked trying to get a block, but it did not matter as it went out the back of the end zone. Yeah, that's definitely a great kick as from the interesting choice of Wildcats to do the onside kick was definitely not a smart decision. And Menlo Atherton will go with a very good kick and that results ball on the 20 for Wildcats. Trevor Cook, the senior, in the gun. This is more of a pass offense. No one there with him. Alejandro Diaz, the fullback, comes back. He's been going all the way. And it looks like timeouts for the Wildcats. Woodside called timeout, nothing going on there. They're Everyone is moving around on the line in the backfield. No one had any idea what to do. And if that is a show of what's to come, it's gonna be a long night for Coach Andrews. If they can't find any offense in this, they're gonna have, as you said, a long night. They're not gonna be going anywhere. And let's, let's look again at how Justin Anderson broke through a um, Broke through a mob of white jerseys. You see it right there. You don't think he's going to get through. Breaks one guy, and then nice blocks. Gets his clear path to the end zone. That's amazing. No one there. Cook, what a great play. fullback to his left again. Ball snap. Scramble. Can sneak? He lost a yard on that one. Yeah, he got killed there. All um, defensive linemen was a... All the defensive linemen just decided to go in a crowd on him, and he couldn't he couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, yeah. Much Not one there. guy there. Everyone got down to get him, but he did manage to get himself back to the line of scrimmage, second and ten from the twenty-yard line of the Bear, of the Wildcats. Eight forty-three and counting. They need a big play here. Uh, and again, Cook tries to sneak. Again, doesn't get anywhere. The time they lose yardage. Downed again. And you said that their offensive men low after they would be good and then the defense would struggle. Right now, it's definitely looking like the defense of men low after is just coming on yeah. over and over, just banging it over and over. It's been doing very well. Yeah, look at the replay. There are like five guys on him. Yeah, right there. 
Um, Cook tackled facing by like the longest first down today. Third and 14, and they've tried to run the ball twice. They're probably going to have to throw this time. There's no short kicks happening after this if they can't convert. There's no way. Very deep in their own end. Cook get it, third and 14, and he's going to QB sneak again. QB sneak again. And speed, and again, gets completely dropped. Maybe picked up one. Probably only got back to the line of scrimmage, though. Why are they scared to pass the ball here? I don't understand, man. Yeah, passing would really help them. Anyway, it's it's four, it's fourth down and 10. 15, you mean? Yeah. And this is not like, there's nothing they can do, and they're gonna bring out the kicking team, as there's no short kicks coming. And guess who's back to receive? Yup, it's Justin Anderson. This um, guy is just leading Menlo Atherton right now. He's already scored a touchdown, seven minutes into the first quarter and Anderson came up to like the 50 and he got dropped to like the 44 by his coach coach expecting a longer kick here's the kick Trevor Cook kicks kick. it it's short it drops and is down at the 48 and of the Wildcats and again they're the Bears start starting one play twos in into Wildcat territory this is going to be a problem. They need to stop here, no matter what, right, Adam? Yeah. And this could be another sh short drive ending in a touchdown. Yeah, they're, they're only a five-yard difference for this. They might make another touchdown, especially with the run game. They're getting in the run game. They need Destin Hawkins, maybe could break out here and make some big efforts and run. Malik Johnson, the main receiver, singled up Bears sideline. He has been all night. Anderson, Hawkins behind him. He keeps, fires, Screen caught pass. behind the limage, behind the line of scrimmage. Breaks one, picks up eight, nine. Still going first down. Great job there. And quick um, update. Um, Tommy Misalam is on the... Um, side getting looked at. I think he's just getting some massage. Hopefully it's not bad. But he definitely looks like he's not in amazing pain. Six, 620 to go here. Um, First and 10 for the Bears. 39 yard line here. John Another he takes his snap, give to Hawkins, off the right side, on, fine, big pick up, first down, he's still going. Breaks two tackles after the yard. Let's see after what happened there. He looked like he was shoved out of bounds. What a great job, that is just Destin Hawkins showing off what he has to do. He is just broke, he's, they're breaking tackles. This it looked like he was down, but he survived with the, the spin move. <sighs> yeah. Bears driving again. It's been nothing but offense. No for the Bears quite yet in this game, but the fact that we already have some, they're just giving up yardage over and over and over again. They just cannot, they just need to stop. If they want this game to go anywhere towards I their formation, form. Anderson gets the snap and again gives to Hawkins. Not so fortunate this time, picks up four, maybe five. At that time, he was definitely bottled up to not be able to run too far. Well, there were a lot of defensive linemen in that area. Uh, I, and I believe this play is probably a sec, second and eight. Second and six. Six. Second and six to go. First quarter. The ball's Five already on minutes the, to go. It's already on the 16. They're just driving over, and there's nothing this defense can do. They scored the last one from 21 yards out, for, so the first play in the red zone. Look, pass the game. pass, and oh. incomplete, and there Flag. it is. Flag goes up. That could, that was thrown actually behind the line of scrimmage. That was So it, it looked like there might have been pass interference called, but that came from someone else. Yeah, that was um, David Silk, the cornerback, who was a sophomore. It's called on the Bears. Holding, I think. 
It looks like it's a holding call. Yeah, that will definitely that will drive him back. But nice play there by David Silk, making sure that there is nothing up with that. Oh, they're all the way back to the 35 of. They're back to the 35 of the Wildcats. Second and six to go. They're already up seven, looking to extend their lead. Second and 21. Anderson takes the snap and he's gonna take it himself straight up the middle. Breaks one, First breaks down. two, spins oh. three. And First huge down. pickup for Anderson. He's gonna set up a third and short. He did not get the first but it's gonna set up a much more manageable third down. They scored on fourth down last time. Flag comes in late, very late flag. Not what they want. It looks like it's gonna be on Menlo though. I mean, not Menlo, I mean the Wildcats. And they do not wanna get into penalty trouble. That would be the worst thing possible. Yeah, they're already down by And seven. back they go again. We'll be set up from it looks like the 35 again. Definitely not looking what they will. And we don't know what the call exactly was. Here, another penalty and Coach Rava potties out on the field with his headset off, talking to the ref. Uh, Rava potties halfway onto the field right now. He's not happy. He is, oh no. This is an argument. He needs to stay in this game. And he'll walk off the field. He is not happy at all right now. I mean, it didn't do much, but it is still, um, it shows third and five ball in the 15. They need to do something about this. It is not third and five. It is another fourth down. It is fourth, down fourth and five. five. Did the penalties offset? Looks Must like the penalty's offset. Fourth and five, and the offense is on the field. Coach Ravapati being very aggressive here early. Second, fourth down, they've gone for in the red zone. Fourth and five, 15, yard line, four, 32 to go. I'm surprised they're not kicking the field goal. They're going Hawkins for Hawkins behind him, and the Wildcats jumps. Movement all around the line for the yeah, Wildcats. Yeah, it looks like that would be Sergio and Pina who was mad at himself as he jumped early. Yeah, but a lot of them jumped with him. Yeah, he's not alone. And it's now fourth and one. So it must have been a long five. That's definitely gonna change a lot. And they're gonna definitely keep that offense See, up. and now, now they can probably run the ball with Destin Hawkins, who can pound for one. So a huge penalty on the Wildcats. After drawing two penalties, they still couldn't get the offense off the field. Here comes a big fourth and one. Bears trying to extend their lead early. Anderson to Hawkins, first down and more. Yeah, he's Push gonna get that. He got it. He's inside the 10 yard line. First and 10 for the Bears. Right now, Coach Ravapati is definitely, it's paying off to be v his very aggressive style of play. Opening this game is definitely <laughs> paying off for them. As they will get the Jamil. first down. Jamil. It's going to be a first and goal from the nine yard line. Yeah, and let's see if they run it with Anderson here. Um, They've been pounding it with both Hawkins and Anderson. Both of Anderson's passes have fallen incomplete as Mr. Receivers twice looks to throw here, rolling out of a pocket, fires oh. much too high. The intended receiver, Jake Wang, at 5'9", missed his frame by a lot. That they're too high, and this is not like Justin Anderson. He's 0 for 3 in the early going. Second and goal, Ravapati calls time. What? What do you think the Wildcats need to do here? Second and goal from the eight yard line. They need to stop him at all costs. What do they need to do, Adam? Kiwi spy. They, they, the Wildcats just, not the, sorry, uh, the Bears love to do 
the runs. Uh, QB sneak, uh, sorry, uh, Q QB spy will would really help them to end the run game. Uh, what they need to do, I think they need a blitz. They need to blitz this offense real hard, and they need to come out and just find a way to get to the QB, and they want, I would think that their main opportunity would be make them lose yardage. And okay, offense back on the field. Anderson getting last tip. He's the last one onto the field, second and eight from the far hash mark. Let's see what they'll do on this play. Hawkins behind him again. They keep changing the spot, it's now in the seven. Troy Franklin, the wide receiver, comes off the field and for J.D. Carson. He was one of the people talking about how the depression is affecting people in this community. Maybe he can do it. Can he do something? Here's the uh, Anderson throws! Oh, Ooh, man. Off the hands. A costly drop for Carson, who just came into the game. Let's look at the replay. Uh, sets up third and ten. Uh, no, my bad. Third and seven. Third and goal from the seven. And do you think they'll go for it on fourth if they don't get it here? They've already gone for it twice in the red zone. Robin Potty's been extremely aggressive. I believe that they're going to do it. They may do it, but it may not be the best idea to always go on fourth down. Well, we'll see what happens on this play. Anderson, same lineup. They always have Hawkins behind him. And Anderson keeps. Oh flips my. to Haas. Hawkins wide open. Anderson just went straight up the middle. Everyone bit. Flipped it back behind him. Hawkins wide open for the score. Everyone bit and thought Anderson was taking it up the gut himself. And then That's we, great Hawkins job. Hawkins and Anderson right. with scores. Watch 14 this. 14 nothing. There, look, he's going to Look at this gap. Yeah, he's going to get it right there. He's going to be the flip. Everybody's way off. Does not think. So. Bears lead 13, 13 to none. And this crowd's getting really excited. Fourteen zero Bears. All excited here as they made the field, the PAT to make it fourteen nothing. The Wildcat offense three and out last time and lost three yards the whole possession. So they did nothing, did not go forward. They really need to do that here. 341 in the first quarter. So really this has been a real long first quarter for especially for the Wildcats. Their defense has been on the field a lot. Um, only like two minutes for the Wildcat offense who are back here. All white jerseys, numbers in black outlined in gold. The Bears in the gray, piping down the side in yellow and red. Numbers in red. Kickoff. Signed in gold. That ball's driven into the end zone again. Again, that was uh, David and Silk lining up. And they will start. And they will start at the twenty. Wike Tuato looked like he was hit on the play. Huge! He got a huge hit on the play. He's injured, and Rob Potty's not happy at all. The minute that was called, he was up in the rest face. He was screaming. The flag came in. There was an obvious hit, illegal contact. But this might be on Rob Potty for fighting. And. Malik Johnson was there in a hurry. He pushed him all the way back to like the 50 from the 20. And Ravapati was not happy at all. Ravapati's now back talking to the rest. Yeah, there, there's, another, there's another flag down. And Daniel Humeli there just to hold back his coach if necessary. They can't. He's yeah. a valuable piece yes. of this team. Even though he's not a player, he can't leave this game. He needs to stay in this game. He is his... Um, Definitely his anger is flaring right now. He is not in a good mood whatsoever. Even though it seems up 14-0, these are, these are 
some penalties that I wouldn't be happy as a coach. His knee just got cleated. He got cleated in the back calf, I think, or his knee. And that penalty has to be called. There was also a block in the back. Um, so penalty flies in. We don't know who it will be on. Well, the scoreboard says it's for 20. And that means there is no penalty, but well, Ravapati is still arguing with the ref. He's been extremely aggressive tonight. And that that's not really him as a person. He's usually the quiet, mild-mannered coach, not a lot of referee trouble. But he's this is the second time tonight he has not agreed with the officials. Yeah, Justin Andrews is probably not happy as we see a good view as Ravapati is definitely getting mad and he's trying to explain what he thinks to the ref. It looks like the ref is actually listening though. Yeah, Justin Andrews had not done much, has not seen much out of his offense or his defense as he's already losing 14 nothing. They need a shape up. There is uh, only three minutes and forty one seconds in the in this in the first quarter. We'll see what happens next. And both teams have gone into huddle the ball still at the twenty yard line. Uh Delane and are ready clock stopped multiple times first quarter and the Bears defense is lined up at the 25 yard line, still walking. And the flag was picked up, but you can hear in multiple places of the stands, cheap shot as that's what I saw too. And Cook oh, it, the, snaps, the snap is bobbled. And it's going to Menlo Atherton. It was picked up, and now they'll have amazing field position. Maurice Law, they tried to snap it to the big defensive lineman, and it just went right over his head. He bobbled it, and they have it inside the red zone. As A chance to replay. blow it open here in the first quarter. A six second possession. So they've now had the ball for two minutes and three seconds as an offense. As you saw right there. That can't happen. Their defense is way too tired right now. As you saw there at the replay, just he dropped the ball and as I said earlier, turnovers are gonna bite you. And as there is the worst turnover as it's on the 20 yard line. So now the ball's on the 19 for Menlo Atherton, who can just get another score. Right you here. can't turn the ball over against this team. Anderson Pass. throws, end zone! Oh. Incomplete. Malik Johnson, that's the second time he's missed him tonight. And that's usually the dominant duo. Ball on the 19, second and 10. Malik Johnson and Justin Anderson are usually perfect, but Anderson's throwing has been much less than perfect tonight. He's over four. Yeah. What's going on with him? His running's been sensational. His running back's been sensational. What's going on for him personally throwing the football? 0 for 4. He's been definitely overthrowing the ball. So he needs to work on not putting as much on the ball as he's throwing. What do you think, Adam? I agree. Uh, yeah, he he's overthrowing the ball a little too much. That would have been a good play if it wasn't really outside of bounds. Anderson hits the ha! Oh, that Touch was not Hawkins. Their main man, that was Jaden Barker, it looks like. Whoa. No, uh, yep, it was. Yes, and that's the score. Great play, just knocking through. And they use everyone on their team. Yes, and it's already 20 to nothing. This game is already wide open, man. All right, so right here, Wildcats need to score really, really quick. They almost scored more points than they did in the whole their whole last game. I mean, crazy outbreak of scoring. That'll make it 21 nothing. 
21 0, 325 to go. Um, they are now three points shy of what they put up last week. Put up 24 last week, have already put up 21 this week, less than 10 minutes into the ball game. Crazy. It's been a long, long, long night for the defense of the it's, Wildcats, and their offense has had no time. Yeah, it's been a sh very short night for the offense. They've had like two minutes of playing time, and they've only had like two possessions, and one of them just got ended immediately, man. Crazy. Yeah, you do not want to have a false snap at the 20 yard line. And of course, it leads, and they will get hurt out of that because they made mistakes and they get punished for them. But it's already 21 nothing. And they're ready to kick. Driven again and short. Oh, 20 and takes a MA roll. Taken roll at side. the 20. He's going in the wrong direction. That's he David Silk. He dropped at the nine yard line. That was David Silk. And it's only 3.18 in the first quarter. Tackle led by J.D. Carson and Keo Tiu. And now we will finally see another look at this offense. And this is a, like, they need to find something. Passing game, running game, anything they can get going. Yeah, they just need offense. They are negative three yards on the first drive and turned it over in the wrong direction on the first play of a second drive. Um, non-existent offense and MA Bears have not had to play much defense. They, they are already on a four game losing streak and they do not want to lose this game. And again, he's going in the wrong direction behind the line of scrimmage. The ball would probably be on like the six or like, this is like a problem because they do not want to get a safety. That's the last thing that could possibly happen. Tackle by Dominic Paga. Second and 18 for the Wildcats. They're huddled up in their own end zone. This I think he's right, it's at about. The oh, ball's at the two. two. It's at the two. This and, is it. And they've lost, they've gone for negative 11 yards of offense and if they lose two more that would be a huge two yards 230 and counting he's in the end zone he throws over way, the lead. way that was way too long he rushed that too much he was not ready to throw the ball and he just had to because Ethan he had people coming it, and he didn't that's not his fault that he rushed the throw. He's in a collapsing pocket in the end zone. He can't get safety down 21 nothing. His offense has done nothing. He's done nothing. I'm, I'm not gonna blame him for throwing that ball away in a collapsing pocket in the back of the end zone. Except he threw the ball away near uh, some corner, so. Yeah, he looked for his man. Maybe his man makes a diving catch. If not, at least you're not safety in your own end zone. Yeah, I don't blame him either. Third and 18. Yeah, the ball's still on the two, though. I mean, oh no! Oh, the oh, snap! It's out of the back of the end zone. That's a safety. Amazing. The second missed snap. And Bye. as I said, turnovers, big issue. And again, another turnover of safety. That's two points to MA. It's 23 to nothing, and they have the ball. Okay, so right now it's nine points up, turnovers, and two completely completely unforced turnovers. The Adam, Bears did nothing on those plays. Adam, what are you thinking on what is, snaps. what is going through Justin Andrews' mind right now as he's getting crushed already? Ju Justin Anderson is actually up 23 to zero, ha having himself a night. I mean, not Trevor Anderson, I mean the Woodside coach Justin Andrews, as he is definitely, what do you think is going through his mind, Adam? He's probably thinking, okay, what's happening? Uh, if I were him, I'd have the, the safety work on the snaps or put someone else there. Because you can't have false snaps there, especially near the, at the 20 or at the two. Will hold fast. The center has botched two snaps, accounting for nine points, and that snap was not close. That snap was three feet over his head, one bounce out the back of the end zone, 23, and the ball will be Punted away 
by Trevor Cook. This is the last thing. So now they're just getting killed. It's turning into a blowout, and they just need to find a way to score. And a very short kick goes straight out of bounds. Almost knocked over all the Gatorade on the MA sideline, but it doesn't. Ball's at the 50. It's because they don't have the caps on there. <laughs> yeah, but there's quick, just big problems coming from here. Justin Anders is probably fuming. I mean, I mean, I don't know how the um, MA coach just, I don't understand how he could possibly, like, get, how he could possibly get mad in this situation, like, as he's getting mad. Robert Potty, the last two plays, he was not getting angry. He took the ref aside and said, I'm sorry about that call. I could see him. He walked him back as the, as the safety happened, as the team was running back, and I, he, he just, like, shook his hand, and he was apologetic that he lost his temper at him. Yeah on back-to-back -back possessions because I think it has a meaning that the fact that he did, he's winning in this game, he should not have argued. It doesn't really make sense for his team. Anderson gives to... That looks... That was um, DeMarshawn Payton there as he just ran that right through the D-line. Another first down. This offense has been, they've just been all over the field, running the ball, passing the ball. On the really 34, though. they run it again. And DeMarshawn Payton didn't get as much this time, still got a lot, pick up of eight. Yeah, and what they're doing is they've just spent so much time in the Wildcats, half of the territory, and just... Second and five at the 25. But they definitely need to shape up and find a way to... May, they need to get a stop, no matter what happens. They cannot give up more points. That's just, it's bottom line, no Rock points. Running under two seconds, Anderson keeps again. No, he flips to the marsh on Peyton. First down. And that is, looks like it's gonna be close to a red zone opportunity. And there's still one minute and 35 seconds left to go in this quarter. Man, they've got time. I mean, how much time do you think Coach Andrews, they need to bring the offense, have more time on, out there to even do anything and get anything going? The offense has six snaps. Um, two, um, three were quarterback sneaks for one, negative one and negative three. Um, the other a punt, a uh, snap. That was recovered by MA and at the a 15 and They're then one incomplete pass in a collapsing pocket, one loss of eight yards, and then the snap that sailed almost through the uprights. Yeah. Second and eight. Anderson throws, fires, caught behind the line of scrimmage, and he's wrapped up. Oh, he's gonna Troy Franklin. Ooh. Oh, that was, yeah. was not the best idea. And he might he lost a yard. Yeah, he's definitely losing yardage there. That's not what they wanted to happen. Less, uh, a little over 50 seconds left in the game clock for the first quarter. They might not. They might put it over the second. They'll wait this out. They're, they've got to. Yeah. There's no meaning in starting. They've already scored 23 points in the first quarter, which has got to be somewhere like a mate. Yeah, but you're not going to wait out 37 seconds. M.A. Bears in the huddle, and... We'll get one more play. Yeah, they might get one more. Anderson, 28 seconds. Defense is lined up, and here they go. Third and 12. Longest third down they faced all night. Only the second, though. Yeah. Anderson in the gun. Probably going to throw the ball here, but he might run. He's gotten 12 multiple times tonight. And gives to Peyton. Oh, breaks wow. one tackle. Breaks two tackles. Pushes his way up. He's going to be about five, six yards short. And, and that's how we're going to start the second quarter. The Bears will have a third and... Well, the Bears will have a fourth down. My bad. Fourth and five to start the second quarter. The ball it's be been all MA in the first. They're up 23 nothing. What do you guys have to say about the complete dominance this home squad has brought to Coach Parksfield. Immediately, Justin Anderson creating a great start. I think um, the defense was good. 
and everything about MA, everything they did, they had maybe Justin Anderson had a few throws that were a little too high, but other than that, they were cl anywhere close to perfect. And the replay in that quarter break was the Marshawn Payton's the final play, and you saw him early break a tackle, which it's fourth and five. If he hadn't broken that tackle, it would have been like fourth and ten, fourth yeah. and nine. And Ramapani, it's a, it's gonna be a fourth down. And will he stay aggressive and go for it again? The offense is out on the field. They've gone for it twice on fourth down. Both times have been in the red zone. This one close fourth and five. I don't from the 30 yard line. I don't believe that the Wildcats have even been past the 40 yard line in their own territory. Yeah. They've gone nowhere. The honest. Wildcats have not been past their own 10 yard line at this point. They've gone nowhere. Squads yeah. quit sides. Anderson breaks one and he's going to be dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It's a turnover. Last thing they, they don't want that to happen. Turnovers are big problems. But here comes the offense, which could be major problem. And they... And back out comes the Wildcat offense, and they've needed something, anything to get them going. Well, now they're definitely past the 10 in their own, but can they go anywhere? This is their best starting field position or any field position. Um, they just started on the twenty, three and out. Then they got it. So they got um a turnover, turnover there. But it was like a very own. It was bad punt, and then out of bounds, and then safety, and then all this revolt just kept going over and over. Trevor Cook and no again. This time it works though. They've tried this multiple times. Snap right to the fullback Alejandro Diaz. The first time they tried it, lost eight. Second yeah. time they tried it, got safety. Now it works. Finally. Second down, second down, down some five. He picks up five. They actually get some work down. Yeah. They did some. Just five more yards and they get another first down. And here we go, and it, it will be um, Wildcats taking the snap at their own 33. Snap taken by uh, Cook. He'll run to the side, and he will be pushed out of bounds there by Marshawn Payton, I think. No, not, not Marshawn Payton, I'm sorry. I think that was... Um, Matt, um, Matt Bartolozzolo, that I think that, yes, he was the one who pushed um, Cook out of bounds. Yeah, third and nine. And again, this offense is not going anywhere. Long third down coming up. They've had one that time they lost the yard, and the other time they snapped it out the back of their own end zone. Yeah. So it's been rough on third down. Cook and... Alejandro yeah. Diaz, high snap. F Cook takes a snap and he gets killed. Sack. He's dropped. Dropped, and that, of course, will be fourth down. They got to punt it. They got to get Two yardage in there. Just Third time, it's been a horrendous snap. A horrendous snap. And the punt team coming out, which is Trevor Cook, is their punter and quarterback. He'll be kicking away to Justin Anderson already, having himself a night. Up and this is definitely a problem they need to stop with all this and they need to just okay we need to regroup as a team we need to find a way to come out in the second half and maybe do something about this maybe they can do something now but they need to do anything and this is not what they're gonna do just keep getting three and outs and fourth downs here Trevor Snap. Cook back to punt there's the Pops punt. This one up. Oh, that was a better punt. Looks at least. like it's going out of bounds, though. At the 49 or 48. So 
Bears, well, for the only second time this game start in their own territory. Yeah, but it's not even close to their own territory, really. It's it, just on it, the 49. So, Adam, what do you think on this field, has field position affected the way the Bears have found a way to already stay up 23 nothing? Well, as you can see, remember in the beginning of the game, the, the Wildcats decided to go for an onside kick, which, pro, which, which definitely hurt, which definitely damaged their defense with that. The field position definitely help, helped them because of the fourth down conversions. So yeah, if so maybe a little bit back, they might have not gone the touchdowns, but well, as we can see, Bears 23 nothing. How much credit do we have to give right here to Coach Ravapati as that I think Anderson is. with the handoff. And again, they just try to pound it up the middle. And I say they use the run game even a little bit more because, and take the time after the run. Don't, don't run the hurry up or quick offense that they've been doing all night. They're up 23 nothing in the second quarter. Yeah. Wildcats losing a bit of hope. Sideline went from standing, walking up and down the field with their defense and offense to sitting on the ground on the bench. Yeah, they have no ego right now. They need to find a way to get a drive going. Might, don't even need to like, get into the end zone or something. They just need to get a first down, which they have not gotten all night. Even the and NBA crowd aren't as in it. Yeah, oh, and there's an early whistle there. As he started spinning, and it might have been above. No, I don't know what's happening. Oh, it will be a third down. Otherwise, um, even even the MA crowd's not as in it. Homecoming, they had the same week at the same time. That, that was more of a rivalry game, I guess. And homecoming against a bigger opponent. You see kids walking out, just standing, not even watching the field, talking to each other. Um. The atmosphere, not as big of a deal as I thought it was, and definitely not as two weeks ago, but it's 23 nothing. Woodside is not great, and it's a blowout. Here. Anderson in the gun again. A Anderson takes a snap. He will run it himself. He kind of faced some trouble. He got uh, through. Wow, this is amazing. Oh, my God. And he's still going. He's still going. And this 20, is it. Touchdown for Justin Anderson, his second of the game. Second rushing touchdown and for let's Anderson. See let's see the replay of this. And he just busted up. Two oh. guys rolled out under pressure in the pocket, and after that, he needed one block. Right just there. Just right by one guy. Yeah. A he little just, bit before, it looked like he, he, was, run, he run, was dead, but no, he kept going, and touchdown. Runs through the, the whole entire defense. Great. And, He's getting booed. It looks like this it will looks go like back. It looks like there was an illegal bl yeah. block in the back. Oh, and this huge this block brings him all the way back. Yeah, this will oh. not count. It will be a third down and long. But who did the illegal block? Well, QT did the illegal block, and he would just. He said sorry to Justin Anderson, and he knew that was him early. Yeah, it's going to be another third and six, though. It's not going to change. It's going to be ball 46-yard line to see if they can get enough, maybe a first down. Lost third down, Anderson. Runs right, same play. play. And he's going to do it again. No way. Plays one call back. This one's down. not going to be. Anderson, it's the exact same play. But defense still can't do nothing about it. Now, 29-0. It's, it's all M.A. Does at home. Woodside has not had any chances to do anything this game. Their defense is bad. Their offense is bad. And it just shows that Justin Anderson is just, just – running through the whole defense, and he can do it twice. That just shows he does it once, he has to go back, and he does it again. Chance of there's no defense in the MA student section. This place went nuts after that one, yeah. and the point after attempt is good right down the middle, and that makes it already 30 nothing. The Bears' offense is so good. I'm sure the defense is really bored, like they want just something to do. They haven't had much, but I'm sure the defense is excited about. I'm sure the defense is happy. 
Yeah, they gotta be, man. They're up 30 nothing on senior night. Yeah, for all the seniors Wonder who's here. happy, I bet the subs are happy. They're like, let's go, we're getting some action. We're up 30 nothing halfway through the second quarter. We're coming into this game. Yeah, they, they know it. They know Robert Potty's gonna take them out and they're gonna put in some subs to maybe see what those subs can do as it's all M.A. They got, and Woodside. Then again, nearing the end of the season, um, he could be play, he could be playing out their starters. I think this is their last or second to last home game. He might just let the crowd and let his seniors play this one out. Maybe the bench seniors will probably come in and play. Anderson sitting down on the bench in it. Teammates all around them. That one's a short kick. Bounces, picked at the 30. Ooh. Ugh. That looked like a bad hit. No one down though, which is definitely fortunate. Especially for the Wildcats, they need all the players they can get. Um, and Wildcats back, Wildcats offense back on the field. They're down 30 nothing. They need something. Their, First down. their offense has been dormant completely. Yo, I'll call it a major achievement if they can even get a first down. They can do something on this drive, honestly. I think right now they're at an even zero yards of offense because they gained maybe no, not not including penalties because penalties there's been like 20 30 yards against the bears but woodside's lost as many as they've gained cook back this is a second oh throw of the man. night he's under pressure throws caught oh, and what a great job that is a very very good job by number 13 there wow this is a great grant job henry coming up big grant henry just comes in and Hits him at the minute he catches it. S Scott Morimento, he's a captain. He made the catch and got downed immediately. Yeah, great job though by, <laughs> as you said, Grant. He did an amazing job. That's just impressive. And it's a turnover, I think. Yeah, turnover. No, no turnover, I'm sorry. There must have been something because it's a first and 10 for men low offense. So something happened. Must have been a penalty. Yeah. No, but it's it's not the men low offense. Wildcat offense is still on the field. Um, I think, I'm not sure. Maybe a yes, pass Cook. interference call. Now they're yes. running again. That's all he's done all night. Oh, oh my, my God. My he God. is getting killed. As you said, he probably has, he, I think he has yards in the minus section right now. Matt Bortolazzo, boom. No one's getting in that big man's way. Drops him for a loss of, looks like four. Yeah, I mean, their, their yards are in the negatives. It's, there's no way they've gotten more than negative yards. They've just been losing yards like every play. They may have like one play of like eight yards. That's it, and they have no first downs, I mean. Um, yeah, loss of five, second and 15. And will the Wildcats go for it here in a huge situation? They're down so much. Like, they, they need to get their offense going. It's not worth it, though, because they're just going to give up more points. Yeah, and but their offense down. needs something. And again, they do the same thing, snapping it to Alejandro Diaz. He fakes handoff to his QB, takes it up the gut. They've, they've tried to snap it to Diaz as much as they snap yeah. it to their QB. Both <laughs> runners and... It Cook, one Cook? of the times it was a, a turnover. Cook's made two passes, two of the times it was a turnover. One went over his head, okay. what, one went over his head out of the back of the end zone, <laughs> one went over his head off his hands and was recovered. This is crazy, I don't know what. Yeah, third down, third down 13. Two turnovers has cost him nine yards. There's nothing Coach Ravipati no, can my bad, my bad. be mad about in this situation. His team's up 30 points. The other, de his defense is stunning their offense the um, 
Well, and here's a snap. And he's just down. Sacks. Amazing. They have so many loss of yardage. And I, I goes mean, down again, and who's down? He's not. He's uh, not up early. He might be hurt. This is a problem. Look, and look, it, let's look at the replay of what happened. No, and here's a replay. Oh, and he's going to get down. Blitz going so hard. Oh, my. Oh. oh. And he'll, Oof. three men on him. He gets, to, oh, no, he landed. Cook got hit by many guys, but Patello Vuvi That's was a the dangerous. main one. And I, he landed on his head real hard. He's getting helped yeah. off the field. This is. He's going to the sideline. He might be out for the game. This is going to. This is gonna do nothing for the. Who's their offense. punter too? So who's gonna punt on the fourth and eighteen? Long one coming up by forty to go. Here at Coach Parks Field in MA, a beautiful November night. It's been all the home squad MA's game. They're up thirty to nothing. Fourth down. And they're gonna. They'll punt. be getting the ball back again. I mean, this is not gonna help anything. Their best players out. I mean, he's the only one who's been able to do anything. He's had no help whatsoever. He's done fine. There's nothing he can do about O-line collapsing every single time. Yeah, but he's, but the coach is drawing up runs and he's not executing the runs half the time. Yeah, but, but his O-line's collapsing. So yeah. There's nothing he can do. But he's not throwing the football, so his O-line doesn't need to do anything. Yeah. He's, he's rolling oh. out and trying to run every time. A beautiful kick. That was very close, though. There was two um, MAs that looked like they could easily get kicked in the face. Kicks or out at the 28 of the bit. Whoa. Kicks out at, looks at like the 28 of the Bears, but are they gonna? Yeah, Water. ball at the 30 of the Bears, 5.30 to go. And they probably wanna run the ball a couple times, two yeah. clock, score late. Or maybe just they'll try to run with Anderson once and it'll bust up. Maybe not even do goal. anything. It's like there's nothing anybody can do in this situation, especially when you're losing as bad as um, Woodside is losing. Um, Anderson lines up. Peyton next to him, it looks like. And, yep. It's a yeah. gift to Peyton, picked up three, four. Yeah, they're actually doing something at least. They're doing a good job executing plays. They're just making the little plays that can happen, and that's what Woodside is not doing. They're not doing, they're trying to go with, maybe they're trying, they're trying to get these weird run plays. They're trying to do all this weird stuff. While it's not even, it's not working, it's just ending up in more problems. Two turnovers this game. One turns into a safety and another touchdown for MA. 30 nothing. I mean, it's not, there's no game as worse as this. Oh, that was a bit of a fumble, but a good <laughs> shot there. He's gonna keep going. Peyton. Oh my, that was not Peyton in fact. I think that was. Um, it was Peyton. DeAndre Peyton, number one, ran more than he needed to. First and 10. They get the first down. Yeah. No. <laughs> They're at the 40, clock running just about. 4.30 to go. I mean, they've just ran into problems all night long. If they can find a way to do something here on this play, maybe get a stop or anything. Oh, he Gives got Peyton again. Oh, who was that? Lot. Getting gets absolutely, absolutely eaten up. He just went straight into the belly of Adrian Jimenez. Loss of two. Yeah, Adrian Jimenez was right there. There was nothing, no one in his way. He got absolutely trampled, but like, there's still. So good, so good. And They'll be lining up here, one in the backfield. It's Peyton. He's gonna line up to throw. A high oh. throw. And then it has him. Caught. Caught. What a play. play. Down. And he, Anderson. Peters. That's his man. It was Troy Franklin. First Look reception. Replay. That was Pierre jo Troy Forty Franklin. Anderson's first reception of the day goes for a 
booming. That was 60 a yards. Amazing throw. High, it got everything, was perfect, right to the receiver, took it, and straight to the end zone. 36 point lead. I feel bad for the Wildcats. They're just doing nothing. As you can see on the scoreboard, it is 329 left in the half. Chance of we want Caramont going through the MA stands. Caramont is their next opponent. They feel like they, they've got this one locked up. They're only up 37 nothing. Just only at 37 nothing. What is this? Woodside is absolutely collapsed. They're on a four game losing streak. They're about to turn it into five if they can't do anything. <laughs> Woodside needs to put up a better fight. But they're not even going to be able to put up a fight as the whole second quarter, the clock will just be running through the whole time. If only they had more support or with their team. Yeah, they have maybe one first down, but that was on a penalty. So the only first down that the whole entire um, Woodside offense has even came up with was on a penalty. That's it. I mean, it just shows how good MA is and like maybe, maybe that Woodside is a good team but they're just not doing it in this game. They're just, it's not their game. It's just really not their game. It'll be, he'll, it will be the kick off here is it will be, it looks like it will be kicked off. And uh, a hot, high that's, kick. That was a good kick, and it's out of bounds. It'll be at the 20. And they'll start at the 20-yard line. Not exactly the greatest, as, of course, you see on there's still 329 left to go in the half. Second quarter, first and 10 for the offense. Eric Stewart's limping on the kick return. Uh, he did not look very fast going up that field, and he's hobbling now, but looks like he's gonna stay in the game. There's just more problems going on through here. We gotta see, can they get even a first, they gotta find a way to get some offense going. Maybe a few downs, they can get some rushing. They don't necessarily need a touchdown, they need something to get the offense going into the second half. Looks like the quarterback's back in the game. Yeah, Trevor Cook comes back onto the field after what looks like could have been a scare earlier yeah. to end the last possession, but he's back. Great sign there. They need him here. They couldn't really do anything. They, I think Trevor Cook, he needs to show what he can do in this offense, and we'll see if he can do anything in, in this play as they have Arby, and it will be snap. Oh, nice. Interesting, that but was a it, nice fake. it didn't fool anybody as they will not, as it may be a loss of one or they <laughs> might have not done anything actually. Scott Morin Mento, he's been in all the positive plays so far, but too many of them have been negative. The clock is running three minutes just about to go. Yep, we crossed the three minute mark, 258 and counting. What a great job, though. Wildcats in the huddle offense has done nothing. Yo, we got to see. We've all been talking about how the offense has done nothing. How about how the defense has done nothing? I mean, Letty, what I can't believe is that they let up a 40-yard a run to Justin Harrison twice from the same exact time. One was a penalty, and... Here it will be snapped there to uh, RB, but it won't go anywhere as they'll stay, and they, they're not even gaining yardage here. Tommy Williams goes nowhere, 220 to go, but yeah, the defense hasn't been great, but the offense can't commit two turnovers, and you can't you can't give them two free points. Yeah. It, it was already 21 nothing, and then you just throw the ball out your own end zone. The, what is your snapper doing? Yeah, I don't understand, man. They need to find a way. The, all MA is going to be doing second half, and they're just going to be putting a bunch of subs into the game, and they're just going to be, like, relaxing. As you heard the crowd saying, oh, this game's over. We want the next opponent. I mean, there's just... I mean, they're on a four-game losing streak, but, like, even in a four-game losing streak, they're still getting killed. We're under two minutes. No two-minute warning. 
in high school football. Oh, no, oh. should have been intercepted. Okay, I want to say, uh. where was he throwing that to? He threw that into a wide open. Trevathan Norton was the closest player, and he wasn't in the, He's not even on the wild. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I mean that was no man's land, right around the 40 yard line. I mean there was some people like. You could tell there was a re intended receiver there, but the, like, re but the receiver ran a he, slant to the opposite side. So he just threw just, behind him. He was late, and his pocket was collapsing. Yeah, it was just a, it was just to the left side, left side slant, and he just got absolutely just didn't do anything, man. It, it just a miscommunication in the play. Uh, they were lucky that's not, the, it was not picked off. Yeah, and it wasn't close to anyone. <laughs> it was okay. Clock's been running even through the incompletion. 50 I mean, seconds and running, and it does not look like the Wildcats will be getting a score into yeah, the locker room. They do get the ball to start the second half, though. A small consolation for a crushing first half of football. Around 30 seconds left in this half. This is just the they're end. They're punting. There, wind up to punt on a fourth and ten. And if you give Anderson one play, who knows what he'll do with it? Oh, with oh. a punt, I think someone got a hand on it. It oh, and it's a nice roll for the Wildcats. Skips out to the 46. I, I don't think they'll do anything though. Oh, I'm ten off. seconds and, and that's I'm, gonna do it. Yeah, I'm also pretty sure that what MA is getting the ball to start the sec the second half or it. No, in fact, it is um, the Wildcats. The Wildcats are getting the ball to start. So at yep. least they can maybe do something with that. The that wraps up our first half of play at senior night at Coach Parks Field. It's been nothing but offense for MA. Very, very little offense for the opposing Wildcats. I've been Kieran with Adam and Webb. Stick around. We have Nate. CJ and Judge, who will come a little bit early for the halftime show, second half of football, in a blowout at senior night, 37-0 MA at Coach Parks Field in MA. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to today's game here in Menlo Avenue, California, Coach Parks Field. It's a great day, early one, explosive one. It's the second of November, Friday Night Lights, as I coined the phrase. Getting ready for the second half. Let's get into it. Very explosive first half for the MA Bears. Nate, oh. what do you got? I mean, the main story here was defense. I mean, they were plugging the gap. I mean, they got a safety, and this has been and this defense has been led by Daniel Haimuli, the four-star linebacker projected to go to Washington according to 247 Sports. I mean, he is one of the best players in the state. He showed at this game. Uh, of him alongside all the uh, all of the defensive front have been doing well. Um, the offense as well. I mean, quarter you got quarterback Justin Addison just throwing the ball extremely well. Uh, the running game has been well, going well for them. The only thing that can stop him is some injuries and bad calls, I think, in the second half. Absolutely. Well, let's take a look at the Woodside side. CJ, what is Woodside going to need to do that they didn't do in the first half to be able to have a chance of making this a close game? Well, Judge, just to, you know, add up to what Nate said, just it's been a rough it's been a rough year for the Wildcats. Four and five overall, one and four in the league. Four straight games with a loss. Last game out, a 41 to six loss against Carmona. I think, honestly, the problem for them is just they have to get the ball in the end zone. And right now, I mean, Trevor Cook, you've just been watching him. He's been getting plays strung out each which way. Hasn't been able to get the pass off over the middle. His running backs have been getting stuffed to the line. And, uh, Nate, just to add to what you said, I mean, they, MA's got one of the best lines ever. I mean, they've got a, rumor is they've got a guy committed to Alabama, their outside guard. Yeah. But I, I have not been able to confirm that. If anyone can let, let me know, that'd be great. But just honestly, it's it's going to be getting the ball down the field because you've got a very, very tough Menlo Atherton defense. I mean, there's a reason they're one of the best teams in the oh, PAL yeah, definitely. every I mean, year. They've, they've won conference at here at Potty. I mean, he took over for one of the best coaches. Uh, I saw him, their last coach, over at uh, Mitty. Mitty lost 28-21. I think MH is more, you know, they've got the, they had the rougher schedule. They're showing that they can stand up to, you know, yeah. W Cal schools and they kick it in the league every year. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, they're on a five game win streak right now. They've they've got momentum and they got and they're and they've been carrying it in the in the first half and oh, yeah. it's probably gonna continue in the second seeing how it's been played. Yep, that is true indeed. Well, don't change your TV screens because we've got a lot more. Kickoff and more is coming up. Friday night lights, MC Sports. Let's get into it. I mean, the first half was an interesting one. We expected MA to come out explosive like Definitely. they always do. 
MA is just one of those teams where you have to prepare for that explosive nature. Their offense, at Coach Adhir Ravi Pati doesn't run it any other way. He comes out the gate, he comes swinging. You throw the curve, he's gonna choke up, crowd the plate, and swing and swing and swing. I mean, they, came, they, came, they came out strong with the running game. I mean, uh, DeMar Sean Payton and uh, other players like Destin Hawkins, they've been playing extremely well over the past couple uh, games, and they've been plugging the, and they've been uh, running the ball a lot. And, he, and that's how uh, they started off the game. But then uh, he's been mixing up with a couple read options, uh, passing plays, screen plays. You saw a bunch of screen plays in the first uh, half. Uh, what is he going to do in this second half, though? That is the question. Well, just something else. I just remember I just remember talking to Justin Anderson right before the Archbishop Mitty game in, uh, at Foothill College. And, you know, he was the he was a third-string quarterback. The, DeMarshawn was the number one. He got injured. The number two quarterback got injured. So we leave it up to Justin Anderson. And I talked to Justin, you know, like, how, how do you feel going into this, you know, being the third string? And he said, you know what, I'm just going to do my job and see what happens. He's done enough to take over. Not only is the number one, and he's been showing it. Oh, definitely. DeMarshawn has – I'm not even going to say DeMarshawn's been relegated. DeMarshawn, they put him now at running back, and he's doing a great job. I know. The read options mean if, – if you were watching, just there were a couple where – you just see J.A. just take it. He sees the hole. As soon as it gets closed, he knows DeMarshawn's running with him, so he's just flipping it out, and DeMarshawn's getting, you know, five, six yards. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're going to see a lot as, you know, as we as we can see um, the, the cheer squad, both teams, the dance teams, are all clearing off to their prospective sidelines. As the men get ready to come back out and do battle, Woodside looking to turn it around. The score at the end of the first half and going into the second, 37-0. MA Bears have the lead. Um, you know, one of the things that was said and mentioned at the beginning of this game had a lot, and it was a serious moment, it had a lot to do with depression and things regarding that and we just want to let you know if you are going through something like this and if you are struggling and if there's something in your life that is causing you to be this way there's no problem with that but we ask that you please get help before it is too late too many people too many young kids have lost in have lost their lives innocent lives you have a life to live and there's more beneath you than you know and, and we, people care for you you know people care for you we here at mc sports promote change and promote a better future so please do us all a favor get yourself some help because we really want to see you out here making a difference in this world wise words judge wise words yeah. i try I know you do. <laughs> it's like, I know you do. Yeah, well, uh, let's just get back to football. The one play, I think you mentioned the uh, inside guard for uh, uh, Menlo Atherton. Uh, Joseph Paulo is his name. He's a senior, 6'8", 340 pounds as a high, school, uh, high schooler. He is an absolute monster. Absolute monster. monster. He's been, he's been uh, give, wrecking havoc on this uh, uh, defensive yeah. line. He's sitting on the bench right in front of a 77 yeah. with a big afro. He he's is, just uh, huge. I, I remember yeah. walk, seeing him walk in. And he's towering over everybody. It's yeah. like he's six seven. He, he, the, thing is, the next the thing tallest is player is six three, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's worse is the fact too is if you look at him, he's six seven, but he doesn't look like a big three forty. He's yeah. just all muscle. Yeah. I know. He looks like he goes to the gym three times a week and just reps it and reps it and reps it and gets out and everyone's looking at him going, How many more reps you got? And he goes, I just finished. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Here's my six pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the way it sort of works. I mean, let's talk coach perspective here. I mean, you're coaching here, Ravi Potty. You've been doing this for a while now. We've had the pleasure of calling some of the games, some of the best games under Coach at here, Ravi Potty. What are you telling your guys as we're going into the second half, coming off an amazing, powerful first half? What are you going into the locker room telling your boys? Just continue to do what you've been doing. Just continue to execute your job. I mean, it's not about uh, it's not uh, my uh, my coach used to say this. It's not about how uh, hard you play. It's about how uh, how smart you play. And uh, his players have been playing very smart this uh, game. And if they continue doing that, they're going to walk out of here with an eight and two record on the season. And that'd be very. That's very good. It's going to help them a lot, you know, going into the uh, CCS, CCS playoffs. But something too that he has to tell them is, hey, don't get cocky. You're up 37, but that can change in like two, two, two or three possessions. All it will take is Woodside getting you know a score, and this could come crumbling down for the Bears. Exactly. All right, Woodside, very um, upsetting, very uh, shocking. Uh, first half, CJ, what is the coach telling his boys going into the locker room coming out for the second half? Well, if I'm Coach Justin Andrews, I mean, you know, you just come, you've just come off a four-game losing streak. He lost 41-6 to six out to Carlmont. You know, Carlmont, I've been told, has some decent players, but is, is, is an up-and-down school. 
I'm just telling them, hey, get a just get a possession, get a feel for possession. They haven't had the they've had the ball for like what three minutes, maybe grand total in, in the half. They haven't so even gotten on the other side of the field. Exactly. I mean, so it's you, been a this, rough day. Hey, this is just like when the uh, Niners put the Cardinals, you know, first things first, get to the other half of the field. Work from there. If yeah. you can't get to the other half, it's not it's not it's gonna be a long day. Yeah, but I mean also you wanna talk about that. I mean, then this is also looking like shades of last night's Thursday night football game, last battle of the bay, it was a pretty Blow, it was with a the powerful one. Court, with the Fed's yeah. Yeah. Well, Nick Mullins, well. I mean, we don't want to get into it too much, but I mean, Nick Mullins, stellar game. Uh, more than 150 yards, give or take. You know, 151.9 quarterback rating on the day. Three touchdowns. I mean, it was great. He had a, an amazing game, 16 for 22. I mean, they, they all showed up, and that's what MA has done. They are doing just what the Niners are doing. They came, showed up, found the weakness of the de their defense and exposed it to their full advantage. And that's what they're gonna need to do for the rest of this game. Let's talk, if you wanna talk about MA's offense, let's talk about MA's offense. I mean, last last game they played against Half Moon Bay, it was a win, 24 to seven. And the main player in that game was Destin Hawk, Dustin Hawkins with 142 rushing yards and one touchdown. I mean, he really carried them in that 24-7 uh, win against Half Moon Bay. Oh, definitely, and you know, Half Moon Bay, you know, the PAL, is, it's one of those interesting leagues. It's, it's broken down into three different tiers. And it's kind of regional. It's a little, it's yeah. a little interesting. So, um, MA's got Woodside and Sequoia. Half Moon Bay's got a Terra Nova. That's an excellent football school. I keep hearing, I keep reading stuff about them. Pacifica has just some reason got a lot of football talent up there. So, it's kind of weird because Half Moon Bay they played Mountain View earlier this year, and you know they got a little roughed up. So, it, it it's always just a toss up in high school. But this is one of the harder conferences. It's not the hardest conference. I still personally believe that the W Cal St. Francis is just always going to be the rough conference, but I think the Pal is probably the second best in yeah. terms of just competitiveness. Well, I mean, you could def. But the thing is that I'd like to mention about the Menlo African Bears here. They started off on and a here two comes game the kick. streak, and uh, that's kicked back deep, and it's dropped. Picks it back up. Gonna try and get some yardage. He does, and more. Gets out to about roughly the 25. Let's see where they that mark him. Scott Mori Moto via cap, the senior captain, 5'7", 140, playing wide receiver and cornerback. I mean, good return, making uh, nothing, making something from nothing. Well, definitely, too. And you see he dropped it, but he got some blockers on the right-hand side, and the Bears couldn't corral him quickly enough, so he ends up turning it from something where it could have been, you know, 10 to 15 into about the 25 and gives the Bears actually a decent start. Uh, definitely. Well, let's see how the rest of this drive plays out. I mean... Let's see, what, what is, what's the game plan for this drive? I mean, first drive of the second half, you want it to be a big one, especially if you're the Woodside Wildcats. Well, if, well if, I'm Andrew, if I'm Justin Andrews right now, I want something where it's going to shut down the biggest weapon on the, uh, on the Bears, and that's going to have to be the outside tackle. Uh, Joseph Paolo, I believe. Yeah, Paolo. Is. Yeah, Joseph Paolo, number 77. You want, I want to do something where I'm going to run right through him. Here, here we go. Oh, the ball. Pressure coming in. The throw. No good at all. Incomplete pass. And that's just showing right there the tenaciousness of the Bears defense. I mean, continuing the momentum that they had exactly. on bringing the pressure to the quarterback against this weak offensive line for Woodside. And that's just the one thing. If you Every year you look at MA's line, and it is just all of these nice large gentlemen. I'm just going to be blunt. Large gentlemen yeah. just built like rocks. And yeah. Archbishop Mitty. You were, I was watching that, and it was a line full of linebackers. It was just the, your line was linebackers. It was it was too one sided. Second and ten, ball is on, marked at the twenty. Let's see what they'll be able to do with it. The ball snapped. Quarterback's got the ball. He's gonna run it up the middle. Gets a few yards before he's pushed back and tackled down by this MA defense. That play was uh, Trevor Cook right there, a starting quarterback, six one, solid size for a high school quarterback, but. Uh, could not get anything going right there. Yeah, Trevor yeah. Quick. I'm just Trevor watching that. 6'1", 188 senior. Also plays wide receiver and free safety. And just something, I don't know what Woodside's coach is thinking. He's got to make, I think he's got to make a quarterback change. Just Cook has been getting lit up. He's got sacked yep. half a dozen, I think it's about four or five times. He, plays haven't been stringing out well. He hasn't been able to hit his receivers. You know, sometimes changing the quarterback up, it, it, sometimes it's a sign of weakness, but also sometimes it's just that we need to jumpstart the offense. Now, I mean, Going into this, this is third and six now. Ball's on the 24. Um, we can get to it later after this play, but what do you think that is? Do you think it's – well, I'll get to it later after this play, but I, I have a big question for you guys. The ball is snapped. And off to number 10. He's going up the middle. Gets the first down and a little more. That He'll be tackled at around Scott Morimoto, the 5'7", 145 senior. 
on the end run and just went right through a seam, I found mean, enough space. We saw him on the kickoff get a solid return, and he's just continuing to ball out the captain. Yeah, okay, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing I want to propose to you guys. Not taking out Trevor Cook, is that a sign of trusting your quarterback to make the plays that you need to do to win, or is that a sign of the game's already tossed, I'm done trying, let's just get this game over with, run through this drive, get them the ball back, and try and make a stop, and have this cycle keep going all the way until the clock hits zero in the fourth quarter. Well, the problem is for Woodside, they've only got two quarterbacks. The other one is uh, Brody Miss Crowley. snap! And they'll fall on it. As I was saying, you know, Brody Crowley, the, the junior quarterback and uh, – What is an LS? I've never seen that before. <laughs> I would assume that's supposed to be linebacker, but I'm not certain. We'll suspend our disbelief for this time. Exactly. Second and 20 on the 25. A huge run by Morimoto is now Eight the, the missed snap. And that's just something else that Woodside's yeah. been having, a ton of missed snaps. I think that's the fourth one of the day. Yeah. And you cannot have that. Especially I, against this uh, defensive line, man. They've, oh, been, yeah. they've been destroying the gap. Like, I feel like the center is kind of stressing here. He's just like, oh yeah, I have to snap the ball, give it right into ball quarterback's snapped. hands, but worry about like the defensive pressure line coming in. Gets away from it. Let's go on the ball. Oh, Ow. so close. Fingertips away. Number 40 for the Wildcats. Clearly upset with himself about missing that one. And that was Anthony Acevedo, middle linebacker and running back, running on the quick slant route. And there if you, you watch, it, watch right here. Has enough time to get the throw off. But Acevedo ended up in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he Tripped, underthrew it I a think. little bit. I think it was a little, I think he might have had, lost his balance there. But uh, that's just a mistake you can't really make. Is. Oh, yeah. And, well, he, and his position was running back. I mean, have, I, th I think that's an interesting strategy for Justin Andrews to bring out in an, uh, to bring out the running backs when, when he could easily be blocking the uh, Seven pressure. minutes left. Seven minutes left in this third quarter. Missed opportunity there, third and 20. Ball snapped again. Pressure coming in again. He's got time. Let's it go. And it'll be almost intercepted and almost caught as well. It was close, but that's going to be an incomplete pass. Skyler Thomas right there almost getting the uh, the interception. He's a sophomore. Uh, yeah, Tommy Williams on that. And Tommy Williams, the intended target. And, you know, did a good job. He actually made a play on it, but... Skylar Thomas getting in there, doing a great job of breaking it up. Yep. Maybe. Well, it's fourth and 20. Woodside going to bring out the punt unit. Yeah, it looks like they're going to bring out the kicking unit, but it does look like Trevor Cook is still out there. Yeah, Trevor. Fake punt? No, he's, he's also their, he's also their punter. Uh, does everything. Wide receiver, quarterback, free safety. That's what I call. The kick the threat. will get past the 50 and go out. And that's a in. huge, oh. huge Wildcat bounce right there. Being and it was down hit by, by a Wildcat defender. Going to mark it at, want to say, somewhere around the, the 40. 30, it's about the yeah. 40. I think that's about 30, there. I think mark yeah. it at 38. <laughs> and now we're just going to sit back and watch Jesse Anderson do his job, what he's been doing all night. Yeah, for sure. Five minutes, 25 seconds left in this quarter. I wouldn't be surprised soon if her potty brings out one of the other quarterbacks who he's got. I'm trying to find I mean, him. it could be Felipe Malupo or a senior. Try to get him in on senior night. Or it could be Jack Alexander. I mean, he's got a lot of options in it at the uh, quarterback position. Definitely more than uh, Woodside. Oh, yeah. Anderson under center, takes a snap, has the ball off, trying to find the hole, he does. Still on his feet, but not before picking, brought to the ground, not before picking up a first down, but there is a flag on the play. I mean, DeMarshawn Payton right there, I mean, we could see what he did, we, we saw what he did at a, a cup in, a, a, in the uh, second quarter with a big run there. He did it again, but uh, I think we got think the play's gonna be going back. Yeah, and so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be brought back. Well, there's Both there's the offsetting decline. personal yeah. fouls, and I wonder if it was on the uh, wide receiver away from the play. We've seen that a lot being called in the that, NFL. Yeah, as you can there's see, gonna be 
There's going to be guys on the way away from the play, and they're getting called for fouls. Yeah, as you saw on the left of the screen, referee going up to pick his flag up. It was definitely over there. Even though the ball had nothing to do with the penalty, there was a little bit of roughness, too much aggressiveness there from the corner and the right receiver. Let's see what M.A. does here after a first down gain. Ball's on their own 37. Anderson will be under center yet again. Ball snapped, and off again. He finds a hole, gets the first down and more. Out past the 40, gonna mark him down at the 38. Adrian Jimenez is a 6'4", 260 defensive end. On the stop, but that's Demar Payton just, Demar Sean big, just doing it again. again yeah. Looking a little bit like back Carlos Hyde. Oh, yeah. If anyone Never remembers really. Carlos Hyde, he's doing very well with the Cleveland Browns, and I still Jaguars don't understand. Tra got traded to the Jaguars, actually. Oh, never mind. He's now with Jacksonville. I still do not believe that the 49ers traded him. That was an interesting trade right there. I don't it know It was, but why. I mean, you got to think about it. They're pretty set in the backfield with people like Jarek McKinnon, who will be out for the rest of this season, but will love to see him play next season. Alfred Morris, the veteran Bra Matt running back, yeah. and Matt Breida. Well, Bray, I'm going to give you that, but you, you sometimes want a little more speed and a little less power for there. Bray is a good one for if you need like a two-yard gain. Carlos Hyde Anderson. was if you need like six. Anderson under center. Hands the ball off again. Going to go to the outside this time. He'll be tripped up. Looks like he got tripped up by a block or maybe his own two feet. Well, Leo Garcia on the stop there, the 5'9", 160 outside linebacker. That's a little small for an outside linebacker. Hey, but he got the job done But there. he got the job done. I don't think it really matters how big you are. Second and six after that four-yard game. The ball's going to be marked at the 35. Woodside 35, that is. Let's see what M.A. does here. You know, the running clock, and that's definitely M.A.'s friend right now. Woodside's yeah. got to get back into this. 2.15 left on the clock. This has been like a long possession for them, and it's yeah. keep on uh, well, they, the start, they started it at about, I think, about eight or nine minutes, so they've, they've eaten up a lot of plays. Line Here we go. Wild, uh, no, uh, my bad. Anderson again, taking it under center. Running back in the backfield. Possibly another run again, and it is. He'll find a hole. Got the first down, and a little more. He'll be marked down at the 25, possibly the 24. They're going to mark him at the 25. He may be only 5'8 and 175 pounds, but Demarshawn Payton showing that he can be a physical runner, breaking multiple tackles on these uh, previous couple plays. And you know, taking a pack of Wildcats, and that time it was Nolan Iron and Leo Garcia on the stop. And it's taken multiple guys to take him down. I'm, I'm personally thinking Demarshawn's going to be playing somewhere. If, if, if anyone hasn't picked him up, this guy is going to be is an underrated running back right now. Definitely. 115 left in the third quarter. Anderson. Under center. The ball is given again to Demarshawn Payton. He'll run it up the middle. Jaden Barker. My mistake. He's Give me Jaden Barker or was the quarterback on that play. Anderson. He's been doing that all. He's been doing this th that the whole drive. He's been calling, he's been uh, under center of a whole drive. And you know, I think this is just a part. You give Justin Anderson a break. You know, you got I think it's two two or two more weeks coming up. And then CCS and then afterwards. CCS playoffs, you, you definitely want to save, save, save your star you quarterback for it, you know? Exactly. And plus, you want to get the uh, you, tr you want to get the seniors as much playing time as possible as it is senior nights. I mean, the fans are going crazy here in MA. You you always expect a, a great at, uh, atmosphere here in uh, here for the uh, Bears, but ball snap. Another run up the middle. And once again, again, yeah, and that'll just be another, another big, first down. Just another big game. And Leo Garcia on the stop again. He's been the inside, been the outside linebacker and that, listed, but he's been playing a little more inside, having to st step up on the run defense. And that play is going to take us into our last quarter of play, as the clock winds down in the third quarter. At the end of the third, the score is still 37 nothing, MA Bears. If you're just joining us, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a segment I've coined and I like to call Friday Night Lights, especially when we're here in Menlo Park, California, at Coach Parks Field. It is a beautiful November 2nd, 2018. Boys, the year. After Halloween, you know, Dia de los Muertos in Mexico. The, the year is almost over. Thanksgiving, then Christmas, then New Year's. The year is winding down, and what a year it has been. An interesting one. 
with the highs and the lows, but right now we're in the here and the now for this varsity football game. 36 minutes of play are gone, just 12 more minutes of play left. And it's been a good 36 minutes for Menlo Atherton. I mean, they have, I mean, uh, the, the Wildcats have been getting torched, uh, both physically and mentally, uh, especially in this uh, third quarter with the uh, uh, Bears offense led by Demarshawn Payton, the senior running back and wide receiver standing at 5'8". I mean, he's been, he's been running his heart out in his, one of his final home games of his, of his uh, career. Definitely, you know, Jamar Sean, you know, 5'8", 175. He's that kind of a guy who just always seems to get the job done no matter what. Well, we apologize for there nothing being on your screen, but Bears driving left to right. Lining up in goal line formation. Snap. Given. Gonna Jamar try and get Sean in there, Payton. he does! Peyton, touchdown, Bears! He probably just got 60 yards on that drive and then a touchdown out onto that. He must be happy with himself in this big game. Rivalry game as well, senior night. I mean, this is, this is gonna be a game that he will remember for the rest of his life. And guys, we are literally only a few seconds into this, well, 40 seconds into this quarter and already a touchdown from MA, from MA as they get ready to punt the ball, kick the ball away for the PAT. I mean, it has been an embarrassing game for Woodside. There's I think we a can player agree down in the back of the end zone. It's a Woodside player. Just what they need. 43 to nothing. 42 to nothing. Uh, they still technically haven't made the PA. Actually, no, you're right. 44, 43. 44 after that. 44 after the PAT, yeah. Uh, well, 43 that, nothing. And that's 11, number 15 on the clock. Leo Garcia, who's been one of the premier run stoppers. Oh, you mentioned his name a couple times yeah, on this uh, previous you know, drive, and that will definitely. I'll definitely hit the uh, Wildcats because uh, he's been one of their primary run stoppers. And uh, Menlo Atherton has some of the best runners in the league uh, with Demarshawn Payton, Destin Hawkins had a big game last week. Uh, and then you have the uh, and then you have dual threat quarterbacks like uh, Justin Addison, who uh, is probably not going to come back in. But still, this is it, that, that this entry will definitely hurt the uh, already weak Wildcat defense. Well, Leo walking off the field with the help of an athletic trainer. Do Hopefully hope he's, he's okay. okay. Yeah, yes. do hope he's okay, because if not, they're going to have to look on Nolan Iron, the six foot 160 outside of middle linebacker. The kick is up and good. 44 nothing. The Bears pretty much have this one set and stored away with the final countdown plan. I mean, you can tell that they think they've walked out of here on this beautiful Friday evening with a W. And just, some, yeah. and just something to think about, 44, we're the running <laughs> clock, but wouldn't it be really, 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 really embarrassing if the Wildcats managed to come back? I mean, 44 points in 10 minutes is not, I do not think it's gonna be easy, but if they did, it would just be one of the better it, comebacks I, I, seen. I've seen comebacks like this happen before in both college and the pros. Yeah. Well, here's my opinion. Unless you have the comeback king, Aaron Moneyman Rogers, on the Woodside offense, it is highly unlikely the Woodside offense will be able to come back in this one. Now, mind you, I don't no disrespect at all, but I just don't think you can come back from something like this when you've been taking so much heat from this defense and they're not letting loose of the throttle. They are not, they are not a conservative team. They will play aggressive all the way until the last second. I don't even think the Monstars could save the. Uh, I don't think the Monstars could save the uh, Wildcats here. You know, that's only five guys. You need about 20 of them. Yeah. We'll talk when we get to about 20. And judging an interesting point of fact, you know, the Green Bay Packers, the only team in the NFL that is owned by the public, and I'm lucky enough to actually have some stock, so I can technically consider Aaron Rodgers as part of my investments. What a lucky man! Broadcast partner CJ is as we get ready to see another Woodside drive. You can tell me where I can buy some of these stocks right there. You have man. to look it up online. They do, S and P 500 all the way, baby. Pretty much. Scott Morimoto on the return, the 5'7", 140 wide receiver, cornerback, a senior. Playing one of last he had, a, games. he had a couple of big runs in the uh, in the uh, opening drive of the uh, uh, quarter and a, a big return right there. And Hopefully I've to get definitely. momentum back in the side for uh, the Wildcats. 
Definitely. I think if they can get, a, I think that they'll be happy if they could get a, a touchdown against this uh, hard, very ch very aggressive uh, Menlo uh, defense, as you can see. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd hear Ravi Pati on the sidelines cheering on his uh, team. He's got to be happy with this result on senior night. First and 10 on Woodside's own 16. Two men in the backfield. The pressure the coming. Trevor Cook gets the ball off. But M.A. gets the stop. And Ethan Mooney on the reception, the six foot 155 wide receiver, little in cut, right off the line of scrimmage, gets a couple, but you're not going anywhere I mean, against this defense. The pressure was brought there by uh, Liki Tua. Uh, 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 I mean, he, th 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 that's been the story all night, just the pressure getting to the, uh, the Menlo quarterback. Yeah, and right there, too, in, uh, and K2 running right in. A little dump off pass off the in swing, but that's not going to do anything. I mean, the pressure has been getting to him each and every each and every drive, wherever it has been. Any quarterback in there, honestly. And Mooney again on the reception on the little out screen route. But uh, again, doesn't enough, much no on guard, it. no yards. That was, yeah, down. Mooney. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna make a comparison right now. This is like watching the. Uh, this is like watching the uh, Raiders a couple of weeks ago, and you know just. Get, could not get past their own line of scrimmage. You know, screen passes are working. They're getting the passes off, but immediately getting roughed up on the line. Well, they got a few yards, just three. Third and seven, balls on their own 20. They need a big play here. And Trevor, Trevor Cooks in the shotgun. He's got to look deep. He's got to find something. Playing a two-man back, and they know it's coming. The throw, incomplete. That's going to force a fourth down and seven. And that was Ethan Steinman's the intended target. He's also their kicker at 5'11", 160. He's seen absolutely no action tonight as a kicker. I think that was his first, uh, I think that was the first time he's been the intended target. I Definitely. Mean, trying to get the seniors involved uh, as much as possible in their final, one of their final games. Absolutely. Here we go. Well, 6.50 left in this one. Pretty sure Woodside is going to punt it away as they get ready for the punt. Guys, as, as we said before, it is the holiday season, so do make sure to take time for yourself and think about the things you have in life and reflect upon those things and things that you are grateful for. I know I'll be doing it. I'm pretty sure my broadcast partners, Nate and CJ, will be doing it. So a very early happy holiday wish from MC Sports to you as we get ready for yet another punt from Woodside. I think I think but the Woodside just, I think the Wildcats just want to get out of here. They're even running the clock down. That's, that's approaching the six minute mark. Stop fumbles the punt. Kicks the ball away. Looks like it's going to go out of bounds and it does. That only went six or seven yards. And this is going to give MA excellent field position. Something you do not want. MA being an explosive team, never letting go of the throttle no matter what the score is. Definitely not. And Trevor Cook again, the botch snap. And I don't know at this point if, 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 if the blame's going on the center or if the blame's going on Cook because this is just, this has happened too often. Yeah, and now look who's coming back out, guys. The Menlo Atherton offense led by the Marshawn Payton. He's been, he had a great uh, drive last uh, drive, and I think he's gonna be back in there. Yeah, and Jaden Park, and, sorry, and Jaden Barker. Still being the quarterback. I guess they're experimenting a little. Barker's got, no, never mind. Barker's a senior this year. Indeed, he is. MA's offense looking, getting ready. And the running back in there is Patello Vatuve, uh, the junior, 5'8, 175. Very similar size to uh, Jaden Barker. Payton. Let's see what he can do. Jaden Barker getting ready to go under center. It's Asanga Eke, the uh, late, uh, late add on. Only had 10 men on the field. And I think uh, I think DeMarchand's done for the day. He's done his job. Yeah, yeah, and the person that's replacing him is Patello Vatuve, almost identical size to uh, Peyton. But, uh, and he's just showed that he can do very similar running to him as he gained a couple good, a couple well off thought yards right there. And you know, just something, if you're the, if you're the Wildcats, you're gonna come out of this and just kind of go, okay, we, not only did we go into Menlo Atherton and get killed, we, but, it was just awful. <laughs> Nothing was going right. I mean, the snaps weren't going right. Our defense was full of holes. We almost had two bots. We had a couple bots punts. I mean, you're coming out of this, and you're scratching your head going, what the heck do we have to improve on? Uh, 
I mean, they've all, you only got an, you only got a full week of a couple hours of practice each and every day for uh, for uh, Justin Anderson to uh, to Justin Andrews, my bad, to uh, just uh, say, fix those problems uh, for their upcoming game. Jaden Barker under center again. The ball is handed off again. Breaks through and will be tackled. Number 20 right there. And that was Nolan Iron a can of in top. Remember, he, I told you, once Garcia came out, they were going to be leaning on him. And he does a good job. Runs, strings the play out, and sees him going. He gets the shirt grab and just takes him down. 329 left. Great the replay clock there. right now. This is just huge. 3.20 left in the quarter. Be sure to stay tuned for our quick post game. Three twelve. 12 I bet Lofton's just going to take as much time as they can on the plays. They've got nothing to lose. Just a couple more runs and maybe some knees. We'll put this one away. And Nate, just as a question, you know, who's Woodside have coming after this week? Well, I can tell you who have MA have up uh, next week. They're playing Los Gatos. The, uh, Gets around to the outside. Breaks through. Nobody to stop him. Jaden Barker. Touchdown Bears. And Will Holthouse in pursuit, but just is not going to catch him. At 200, you're running it. Basically, it's 200 against the running back, and that's not going to be easy. The score, 50 to nothing. MA leads. 225 left. This this game right here will be a good. Well, next week after just scoring uh, this big, after putting a 50 bomb on Woodside, they'll be taking on Los Gatos, who are six and four, uh, three and three in the league. That's going to be a good game, uh, in uh, in at Menlo African. And as for Woodside, their next game will be their next game will be. Well, this is our last game of the season, unfortunately for them, and they'll be ending the season on a uh, looks to be a five-game losing streak. Uh, if I'm if I'm a uh, Woodside, if I'm just Woodside fans, Justin left, Andrews, so I, you just want to you yeah, just want to move on from this. Uh, you just want to yeah. move on from this. And this uh, has just been a rough season. Weeks. I mean, a five five losses all in league. The last one at on the road against your biggest opponent. That's just a really tough pill to swallow. Your rivals at that, you yeah, know. And can we just that. say six, please? Six losses. I mean, 123 left, a four and six record. It'll just make me feel better. I don't take anything away from this Woodside team, but what can you do at this point? You can't run away from the inevitable forever. You can't run away from it forever. And they're down uh, 108 left, and they're just yeah. going to wait as long as they can. Yeah. It's one, I mean, one, I mean, we're approaching the one minute mark here. We've uh, reached it. And now we're lining up the, the players attending to thank the fans. I mean, this, this was, this place was packed and now it's almost empty. Uh, and uh, as the clock's winding down, we're just waiting for the uh, kickoff to come from the Bears. I think if you're, if you're Trevor Cook, you're just gonna, Especially, forget about this game. He's he's not gonna want to sleep. He's he's gonna have a hard time getting to sleep tomorrow. Big kick to the back. He'll get his hands on it. Going to try and do something with it, but he'll be brought down, and that is gonna be the end of this game as the clock is winding down. Ten seconds. We're approaching the ten second mark. Ten, Reached it. Nine, eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Final Game score, over. 51 nothing. In MA favor. takes the Bears. The MA Bears. The MA takes the, the game. An amazing effort from people like this. Amazing effort from the MA side. Great job today. They played excellent. Um, we would expect them to do. Um, DeMarshawn Payton played great. Malik Johnson played great. Destin Hawkins had a great game. Justin Anderson had a great game. Tavon Norton, they all did great. That's going to do it for us. Here we go. Here's the post game, real quick. Um, very explosive first half for the MA Bears. 37 to nothing at the end of that half. They did great. Deshaun, DeMarshawn Payton, great first half. Destin Hawkins as well. Uh, second half, MA comes up right out of the gate, does it again. 
ending score, 51 to nothing. It's pretty simple, pretty easy after that. Um, that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my broadcast partners, Nate Martin, CJ Rulo. I'm Judge Cantrell. We'll see you next time. But wait, I want to know something. Key game tomorrow, Sunday. Saints, Rams, who you got? I'm going to have to take the Rams here. I want the Saints, if only just because I don't want the uh, the Rams to go. And I've offense. got the Saints. Let's, we'll see who will win. That's going to do it for us in, here in Menlo Park, Coach Mark's Field. Thank you and good night. Yeah.